Let's learn how to graph logs. What gets math teachers dancing? I'll share the answer at the end. On our agenda, we're going to review graphing exponentials. We'll find the inverse of the exponential. We'll graph parent logs and their transformation. And we'll talk about the properties of the graph graphs. Let's get ready. You're going to need a notebook and pencil. And let's review our graphing exponentials. So here we have y equals 2 to the x. My base is 2, so I know it's going to be a growth. I'm going to do x values of negative 1, 0, and 1. So 2 to the negative 1 is the reciprocal, so we're at 1 half. So negative 1 and 1 half. 2 to the 0, anything to the 0 is 1. So we have the point 0, 1, and there's my y-intercept. And then 2 to the 1 is 2, and we can see that we are growing exponentially with our curve up. As a reminder, we also have that asymptote because it can never be 0, and it's not going to be negative. So this asymptote is y equals 0. So exponentials have a y-intercept and a y equals asymptote. Let's keep that in mind. So we're going to now find the inverse of this exponential. And in order to find the inverse, it involves with switching in the x and the y, and literally just switching their places. So I'm going to say x equals 2 to the y. And now I need to resolve for y, but y is up in the exponent, so that means I'm going to need some logarithms. My base is 2, so I'm going to rewrite it in log form using a base of 2. So I have log base 2 of x equals y, and I just want to switch it around because I like to look at y equals. And this is what we're going to try to graph, log base 2 of x. Well, if inverse is switching the x and the y, then I can just switch the x and the y around in my table. So my x values are going to be these, and I'm going to plug in 1 half, 1, and 2. So let's try those. y equals log base 2 of 1 half. So I'm thinking in exponential terms, 2 to the what is 1 half? Well, in order to get the 2 in the denominator, it must be a negative, so negative 1 y equals log base 2 of 1. We're thinking 2 to the what is 1. That's going to be 0. And y equals log base 2 of 2. 2 to the what is 2. It's going to be 1, and we're going to see that a lot. So log base 3 of 3, log base 4 of 4, they're all 1s. So whenever you have the same base and the same number, the answer is going to be 1. And if you notice, these y's are the same as those x's. So when we graph it, I have 1 half, negative 1, 1, 0, and now I have an x-intercept. And then I have the point 2, 1. Instead of having my y equals asymptote, I'm going to have a vertical x equals asymptote. I'm going to follow the asymptote up and then curve, and we look like that. So while exponentials have y equals asymptotes, oops, oh no, y equals asymptotes, logs have x equals asymptote and x-intercepts. We're also going to call this x-intercept our indicator point because that's going to be the point that we move when we start doing our transformations. When we had our quadratic, and we had our vertex, that was the point that we moved. This x-intercept is going to be the point that we move with transformations. So here's a little neater graph. You can see the red one is my exponential, the blue is my logarithm, and then this black dotted line, well, that has a, a y-intercept of zero and a slope of one. So that is the equation y equals x. That's the diagonal line. And anything that's an inverse is going to be reflected over that line. So these are inverses of each other. When we think about the parent graph, we have the same letters we've been using all along. We have A, and if A is greater than 1, that's going to vertically stretch it. It's going to pull it up. If it's between 0 and 1, it's going to be vertically compressed, and it's going to be squished down. B is our base. Inside, with the logarithm, with the x, that's going to shift it left or right. It's also going to change my asymptote because, remember, my asymptote was a dotted x equal. So if I'm moving left or right, that's going to move that asymptote. And then that last plus k, that's going to shift it up or down. That's not going to change your asymptote. So let's look at the effects of a on the graph. And here you can see 
I have all log base 2, but I've changed a from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. So if we plug in when x is 2, log base 2 of 2 is 1, and at 2, 1, I have that point. And then in my blue graph, log base 2 of 2 is 1 times 2, we are here at 2, 2. And the green graph, we're up at 3, and the purple graph, we're up at 4. So you can see A, as it gets bigger, it's going to stretch that graph up. Looking at the effects of B, or the base, you can see I changed my base from 2 to 3 to 4 to 20. So good numbers to plug in. If it's 2, then I have this equaling 1. If this is 3, this is going to equal 1. If this is 4, it's going to equal 1. So those become my points. And on my red graph, you can see I'm at 2, 1. On my blue graph, I'm at 3, 1, and then green, 4, 1, and then 20 would be all the way off the graph. But you can see it's getting pulled that way by whatever the B increase in B is. So here's our parent graph for, the ba for log base 2 of x. We have our x-intercept and we're calling that our indicator point that we're going to move with our transformations, and we have our x equals zero as our asymptote that will also change. Remember, here it does look like it's gonna to touch the asymptote, but it doesn't. You should put arrowheads on your graph because it's gonna continue straight down and it's gonna to continue to the right. So let's try y equals two log base five of x. I don't wanna plug in x to be negative one. We are not taking logs of negatives. So no logs of negatives. Um, x zero, there's five to the what is zero? Nothing, so we're not gonna use that either. So let's try one. So we have y equals two log base five of one. Just ignoring the two for now, I'm gonna think five to the what is one. That's going to be zero, zero times two is zero, and we have our x-intercept at one, zero. Then I'm going to try to think of a number for x that I can plug in and do it without my calculator. So the next good value for x is going to be five. So y equals two log base five of five. This thing equals one, so one times two is two. And you can see we have that point at our base five, two. Another x value that would be good would be 25. So y equals two log base five of 25. And thinking about exponent form on this, we have five to the what equals 25. Well, that's gonna be two and two times two is four, but that's way off my graph. I haven't shifted left or right, so my asymptote stays the same at x equals zero. And then I'm gonna graph that. So here we have the same start of the equation, and now we're just doing plus four. So we're gonna move the whole thing up four. It's not going to change my asymptote, so I'm gonna keep that the same at x equals zero. I was at the point one, zero, and five, two. So I'm now just gonna move those points up four. One, two, three, four. And we are at Wait, one, two, three, four. Yeah, one, four. And then one, two, three, four, which is five, six. I'll draw that, but I do want to check them and make sure we did that right. So y equals two log base five of one plus four. So this whole thing is zero. Zero times two is zero, and it does equal four. So one, four is a point on my graph. And then let's check five, six. So y equals two log base five of five plus four. Log base five of five is one, two times one is two, plus four is six, and that is another point on my graph. Let's try this one. So I've changed to log base three. I have inside my parentheses x minus one. So this is going to shift to the right one, oops, to the right, one. It's going to go opposite just like everything else. It also means it's going to shift my asymptote. So I'm gonna start with that. And I have an asymptote at x equals one. And then this is gonna move it up two. So let's think about my parent graph first. And if I had y equals log base three of x as my parent graph, that means I'm gonna have an x-intercept of one, zero. And another good value would be 3, 1. Whatever your base is, pick that for your x. So I have 1, 0, 
and 3, 1. Those are the points that I'm going to be shifting. So from 1, 0, I'm going to shift to the right 1 and up 2. And then I'm at the point 2, 2 that we'll test. And from 3, 1, I'm going to go to the right 1 and up 2. And now I'm at 4, 3. And we'll test those. So y equals log base 3 of 2 minus 1 plus 2. Well, this is 1, and log base 3 of 1 is 0, plus 2 is 2, so that works. And then we're going to plug in when x is 4, so 4 minus 1. This is 3, log base 3 of 3 is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, so we have the point 4, 3. So to recap, exponentials and logs are inverses of each other. They are reflected over that diagonal y equals x line. Log graphs move the same as everything else. They start with an x-intercept and an x equals asymptote. We'll answer that little joke. What gets math teachers dancing? That would be logarithms. Logarithms. Good job.